So you're the homeowner, right? You guys yeah. aren't renters? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is a consent to search form. This is the date and t time and your location, which mm -hmm. is your address. This is my name. I request this, uh, permission to search this house in its entirety for missing persons. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign this, and then I need you to read the bottom of it and make sure you understand that. Before you sign it, ask me any questions if you don't understand it. Okay. I'll need you to print your name there. Um, so when I uh, list my name on here, it includes my, my buddies that are with me. Are you good with that? Okay, that's cool. Okay. So I just need you to print your name there. Uh, there's my name. Just read this bottom and make sure you understand that. Before you sign it, uh, ask me any questions okay. if you have any, okay? Today's the 13th. Looking for the time? Yeah. 4.15? 4.36. 4.36. Here? Yep. You have any questions? Okay. I appreciate yeah. it. So at 5.01, Kessinger called Watts two times and he didn't answer. At 5.05, he called Chase Bank. At 5.30, he tried to call her again. She wasn't answering. He talked to Sam Paisley and said, I'm praying so hard, I'm sick to my stomach. Cops searched the house up and down and drilled me pretty hard. I have no idea where they could be. Samantha asked why the police were drilling him. He's such an ass. An hour later, Watts explained, they're just being thorough. They gotta do all the digging they can. People are helping me search. So there's no need for you to get on a plane. We have a lot of support here. At 7 p.m., he got an alert on his phone, dinner with Shannon. At 9.12, he talked to Frederick PD for like six minutes. Then he talked 50 minutes to Kessinger at 9.48. At 11.09, she called him. They talked for 52 minutes. And then at 12.02, she searched online for Shanann Watts. Meanwhile, Frederick PD is trying to get a hold of his ass. So he's kind of like playing phone tag. And he keeps hanging up because, you know... His FaceTiming with Kessinger is more important, so Officer Goodman notes the following in his report. It should be mentioned that once I made contact with Christopher, he did not ask me if I'd been calling because I had information concerning his missing wife and daughters, or if I was calling because they had been found. He didn't ask any of that stuff. So, yeah, he does have Kessinger possibly on his other phone, on FaceTime, whatever he's doing. He's so far removed from what's happening and he just doesn't care. And it doesn't sound like, you know, like Goodman woke him up. I think he does say he was sleeping, but he wasn't. And he's just really matter of fact when he runs through the exact weight he knows the height of each girl in inches. I mean, come on, what dad knows that? And he doesn't even mention the scar on Shanann's neck. From her surgical scar from her surgery. I can't even because this guy is so irritating. And he's evil. So let's listen in on the phone call of Watts and Officer Goodman at 2 a.m.
Yeah, that's a different number now. This is Officer Goodman, Frederick Police Department. And this is Chris Moss. I was trying to call you back from my personal phone. I kept saying call failed. But I just used my poor trunk. Oh, this is your work phone? Okay. So, um, we're just trying to uh, get some um, some of your uh, wife and kids information entered in to uh, put some alerts out there. And I just need to get some okay. inf information about the kids. Um, do you know how, uh, on Bella, do you know her height, weight, hair color, and eyes? So, height would be 42 inches. Okay. Weight would be 40 pounds. Okay. Hair color would be brown. All right. Eye color would be brown as well. Okay, does she have any um, scars, marks, tattoos? No. Okay, and then on Celeste, same thing. So she is 37 inches tall. Okay. She is 37 pounds. Okay. Blonde hair. Eyes. Hazel eyes. Hazel. Okay, and again, no scars, marks, tattoos? No. Okay. Okay, uh, we're just going to get that uh, information out, um, and we're just going to keep. It. Oh, does um, does Shannon have any scars, marks, or tattoos? She has a well, the scar on her forehead only pops out every once in a while from that car wreck she had a long, long time ago, but no tattoos. Okay, is it really a visible scar or no? No, it's just like only when like, yeah, like only if she's like really heated. Okay. She's like outside running around a lot. Okay. So oh, so it's like when there's a lot of sun. Yeah. Okay. And where is that on her forehead? Uh, Left, middle. Yeah, like right in the middle. Forehead is like right, like uh, kind of like it runs like right in the middle, like just above the no bridge of the nose, and it runs down, just like where the like, glass. That's when two or four after that car accident. And when you say goes but, down, goes down towards yeah, the like mouth? It, it goes like, it goes up and down so side to side. Okay. But like, you have to really look for it, but like, it's it's there. Like, if she's like outside running around, it just kind of comes through. Okay. So since the other officers have talked to you, has anything else come to mind that you can think of to help us try to figure out what's going on, where she is? Not, nothing's come across. Just a bunch of text messages from a lot of friends just reaching out to me, just seeing like if if they could help or whatnot. But nothing new. Okay. Can't think of anybody, any other names or anything that that uh, come to mind that we could call. No, not no 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 new names right now. Everybody else is just it's just been like consistently with the same people just reaching out to me. Okay. A lot of phone calls in North Carolina, but people I haven't heard it, heard from for a long time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you hear something, um, obviously, let us know as Definitely. soon as you can. And uh, if you can think of anything, if anything, you know, you think of that that might help us locate her, um, just let okay. us know. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. All right. You have a good night. You too. Bye. I want, I want them wherever they're at. Like I have no inclination to where they're at right now. Like I've exhausted like every friend that I know of, and every friend that I have has called friends that Shanann has that maybe I didn't know about. And it's just like there's, it's like it's vanished. Like she's not. Like when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like she wasn't here. Kids weren't here. I have no idea like where they went. And. It doesn't, it's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. It's like a nightmare that I just can't wake up from. What went through your mind the minute kind of you're like something's wrong? It's like I, I was trying to get home as fast as I can. I was blowing through stoplights. I was blowing through everything just trying to get home as fast as I can because none of this made sense. Like if she wasn't here, like where did she go? Like once I got here, it was like, all right, who can I call? 
who do I know that she could be with right now? If she went to a friend's house, where could she be staying? And we went through everybody. I mean, just everything in my, in my contact list and her, her friend's contact list and nothing has come up. Everybody has said like they haven't heard from her either. I'm just hoping right now that she's somewhere safe and maybe she's just, she's there. But right now it's just like, if she's vanished, like I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. Um, you know, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the hard part. Your first thought is, where are they? I want them back. Your second thought is, you know, your, your friends are telling us and we kind of hurt me a little the phone. You're also, your second thought is that you're afraid people think you may have done something. Yeah, I mean, not, not, everybody's going to have their own opinion on, on anything like this. I just want them people to know that I want my family back. Like, I want them safe, and I want them here. Like, this house is not the same. I mean, I, last night was traumatic. Last night was, I, I can't really stay in this house again, like, with nobody here. And last night, I wanted, I, I wanted that knock on the door. I wanted to see, the, I wanted to see those kids just running, running, just, just, barrel rush me and just give me a hug and knock me on the ground but that didn't happen who are you gonna stay with tonight probably my friends nick and amanda just i mean i think something develops in the next next hours or so like i'm hoping that somebody sees something or somebody knows something and comes forward what's the hardest part of all of this for you not knowing like if they're safe or if they're in trouble like there's just that it's that variable, like, I'm not sure, I mean, I can't do anything right now from where I'm at. Like, I'm not sure if they're safe somewhere, just huddle up somewhere, or if they're in trouble. And knowing that if they could be in trouble, it, it just, it's just earth-shattering right now, and it doesn't feel like it's real. The weird part of all this, it sounds like everything's kind of locked up. There's no signs of them leaving the house. No, really. no like, we have camera there, neighbor has a camera. We, I mean, everything was, everything's checked out. Do you have a camera in there? A doorbell. Only one right there. The neighbor has one over there. Were all the doors around the house locked? Front door was locked. The garage door was unlocked, but that, that's normal for, like, when she comes in the house, she leaves it unlocked just so she can come in and out just in case, you know, did you get in the, the garage door, but the back sliding door was locked as well. So how would she have left the house if she did leave the house? Or anybody? Okay. I've, I don't want to put anything out there, like, just suspecting, like, if something, like, somebody pulled in the back, and because we have a driveway back there from the new townhomes, but it's, it's so hard to tell. Like, there's no cameras in the backyard or anything like that, so it's, it's really hard to even suspect anything right now as far as how she could have left or if someone came picked her up or somebody took her. Meanwhile, today's reality, you've got cops there, cops here, cops in your house, canine units. It's... I've, I've never seen something like this in my lifetime unless it was on TV or a movie. And this, this doesn't seem real at all. It just seems like I'm, I'm living in a nightmare and I can't get out of it. I just want them home so bad. Um, did you see your kids and your wife whenever? Or you had the kids, I forgot. Whenever. Yeah, I had the kids over the weekend. Did you see your wife when she got home? Uh, she got home really late, about 2 a.m. from the airport when she got back from Arizona. Did you wake up and say, you know? No. no I, was, I saw her when she got in, but it was really quick just because it was 2 a.m. in the morning. But I saw the kids in the monitor before I left, and that was it. What, what kind of efforts are happening right now, Chris, to find, find them? Right now in Frederick Police Department, they've been, they've been on point. They've, with the officers, detectives, sergeants, K-9 units here, they're getting sense. So hopefully they can pick up something and kind of go in a direction that will actually lead us to where maybe they're at right now. Ann? Um, Shanann went to, where'd you get that shirt? Oh, this is, uh, I think she got it off Amazon, but this is uh, my favorite college sports team. She, was she, wasn't she just there? She was, yeah, just in North Carolina, yep. So she, probably, she actually probably got it from there. Usually she gets stuff from Amazon, but she, this one, I like these shirts. A lot. You guys, you, you love your kids. Describe your little girls to us, and you know. So Celeste, she's just a ball of energy. She's 
called her Rampage because she's like, she's just always, she's got two speeds, go or she's sleeping. And she's always a troublemaker. She's always the one like jumping off things, you know, just yelling at you and all kinds of things. And Bella, she's the more calm, cautious, mothering type. And she's, she's more like me. She's more calm. She's, but uh, Celeste has definitely got her mom's personality to where she's always just gung-ho, ready to go. That's like I, that's why I want everybody back. That's why everybody I need everybody back here. I need everybody safe. she ask you, was she an officer? No, no, she was a friend of theirs, I guess. Okay. Um, from Arvada. From Arvada? Yeah. Did she leave any contact information? No, she said she was going to bring us back some posters to put up on our walls, but okay. that's um, what she said. So, are you able to pull video, or is that something somebody else has to do? Surveillance, uh, video surveillance? Robin yeah. has to do that. Robin? Do, um, when does she work? She will be here six in the morning okay. until about three. Okay. Um, can I leave a flash drive? We're looking for, I'll write it down on my uh, business card here. From that woman and her two kids? We are. So we need video surveillance from midnight on 810 to prep to now. Um, no, she comes in here all the time. I've seen her she does? a million yeah. times. Yeah, I've seen her for a few times. Maybe not that many times. <laughs> Hence why we need video. So it has that on the back of it. So if you would not mind passing that along to her, asking her to download all of that, and then just call the yeah, call the PD. Um, and any officer it doesn't have to be me. Um, let's do this number here. Weren't you on the one here with that lady the other day? Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> Did they ever tell you about that mal that took over fifty dollars? Uh-uh. That could have been somebody else. Okay. Yeah, that right might have been somebody that, else. We had a guy that handed us a $50 bill that was fake. Jeez. And he tried to tell us it wasn't. He said he tried to tell us it was from an ATM. I was like, you don't get $50 for ATMs. I want to know what ATM gives out $50 That's bills what I said. ever. <laughs> 20s after 20s after 20s. I've seen yeah. one that did 10 one time. And yeah. I think that's the one in Frederick that does that. Yeah, I've never, never seen a 50. Yeah. I've never seen a $50 bill either. Well, I swear. <laughs> See, if you wouldn't mind but handing that off to her, having her record that, and like I said, just call the PD, any officer that's on, come pick that up. Just that would be one awesome. lady came in, it was a friend of hers. That's what from, I was uh, Denver. Yeah. Today. And uh, she showed us some pictures of her yeah, yeah. kids, and she asked us if we'd seen them. I said, she looks familiar. She's been in here a couple times. I know she has, but... Yeah. <laughs> what about the kiddos? I've never seen I don't her with recall the kids. The kiddos. No, kids. just her. Just her. Yeah. Do you remember the last time was that she came in? Her friend you remember was seeing her? telling us that uh, she got home about one thirty in the morning, kissed her husband goodnight, and then he got up to go to work about four four thirty, and he kissed her goodnight, goodnight, you know, and he hasn't seen her since. Hmm. But okay. that everything was left behind. Like oh, all the oh, medication, oh, the kids oh, were. Oh, allergic, have allergies, and all the medications home. Oh, really? She don't have none of that stuff. Her billfold, all that stuff. All that stuff was still left at house. Yeah, that's what she was just telling us. Wow. Yeah. She said that she got home, kissed her husband goodnight, and went to bed? Uh-huh. It's like 1.30 in the morning. Yeah. And then when he got up for work, he gave her a kiss goodbye, and that's the last time we seen or heard from her. Is what she he, she told us. Okay. Did she say about what time that was? Uh, four o'clock in the morning. Four. When, when he went about to work. Four, yeah. Four thirty. The last time she's heard from. Okay. Okay. I can't.
can't remember what her name is. The lady that came in? What did she look like? She's kind of heavy set, blonde hair. Blue eyes, blue. And she said she was from the Denver area? Uh -huh. Arvada? Was she from Arvada? Did you say Arvada? Okay. She said she was a good friend of theirs from Arvada. Okay. Interesting. All right. And I asked her if she couldn't bring in some flyers. Yep. So we can put them up on our windows. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's the number here? It's 04 591. It's 04 591. Yeah, a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely yeah. is. Well, obviously, I mean, it goes without saying if you see her. Yeah. Hear anything? Other details? Just give us a call. Oh yeah, definitely. And she was from right over here, at this new development. Mm -hmm. wow. Yep. Yep. So hopefully. Well, hopefully they're fine safely. That's always the goal for sure. <laughs> hopefully the video will help us get somewhere. Yeah. I swear, I don't know. I thought I'd seen her in here Saturday. Or but then Sunday my daughter was... said that um, when. That somebody said that when her husband left to go to work, uh, he he mentioned something about mm -hmm. hope the kids are all right. They never but said say nothing about her. <laughs> when he left to go to work. Uh -huh. when he left to so when he told her goodbye, he said, "Hope the kids are all right." Well, not when he left to go to work. No, that's what we we'll see on the, yeah, the day. on Facebook. She was reading what was being said on Facebook. Yeah. Oh. And it said something to the fact that I hope the kids are right, but didn't say anything about the, the wife at all. But, and that was on his Facebook? On Facebook, period. Oh, gotcha. From the statement that he made or whatever. But he just put, I hope the kids are right. He didn't say anything about his wife. Interesting. So, yeah, that's what he said. Uh, yeah. Well, Facebook is one of those oh, yeah. <laughs> good, bad, ugly kind of things. Yeah. So it all yeah, gets put out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully it's put out there enough to where they're safely. Hopefully. So sometimes That's... it does come out to be a safe thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Did it reaches... We still got that picture of that girl, don't we? That girl from Dakota? No, we uh -huh. tore it down because she was found. Oh, she was found? Yeah. Alive? That's for Dakota, right? That's what I was told. They were told us to go ahead and take it down because she was gone. She was gone. I don't know a lot about Dakota stuff. Yeah, some of them, there was a little girl missing in Dakota. Not too long ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was found safely, though. Yep, that is fact. All right, I appreciate y'all's help. Thank you so much. So, Shanann, Bella, and Cece are still missing. And on August 14th at 5 p.m., Kessinger searched and deleted. How long do cops keep text messages? How long can cops trace text messages? Difference between text message content and text message detail. At 621, she searched the internet for news accounts of the incident and Shanann's name. The searches were conducted frequently by Kessinger throughout the next several days, and she deleted everyone afterwards. So on August 14th, Watts had planned to spend the night at his friend Nick and Amanda Thayer's. At 6.26 p.m., Watts told Nick Thayer that he was leaving and stopping for gas, and I'll be there. At 6.42, Watts returned a missed call from the Frederick Police Department. As a result of that call, he turned around and drove to Frederick Police Department. At 6.59, Nick there tells Watts that he and Amanda will drive to the police department and wait for him to finish, which they do. Nick told Watts, hey man, we're sitting outside thinking of you. 
I'm talking to an investigative friend and she recommends maybe not talking without a lawyer. Then he told Watts, I know this text might get there too late. So when Watts was all done that evening with FBI agent Graham Coder, he added his contact details to his phone. And so he was interviewed from 7 p.m. to 11.06 p.m. And then he followed the theirs to their house. where he told an assortment of friends that he met with the FBI and they have the case now. Well, let's hear what Nick and Amanda have to say about Watts. We thought we knew him. Um, didn't think he was ever capable of doing anything like this. I mean, there was no, at any of our times of hanging out, there was no signs of that he was ever capable of doing something like this um, and I think Amanda and I latched on to that like, and that's why we were kind of there for him um, yeah. and it's just we couldn't we couldn't see that to be a possibility it wasn't until the detective called me like right as the conference was going on and asked me to come pick up Dieter that it hit and then I just I just broke down from there so yeah that regret regret I mean that's something I'll never forget that we we allowed this guy in our house I mean had we had we had any inclination that we we thought he was involved at all, no way would I have let him in my house with my wife and kid. Um, 